For the final time, The Unshackled Ways, episode 266. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Ways with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, welcome to the final ever Unshackled Waves episode. What a journey this show has been on. To give a history of how this show began, when The Unshackled was first launched in September 2016, it was simply a blogging website. Myself and my co-founder Suka Fernando then in November decided to launch a podcast to begin the audio-visual stage of the project. We had no idea about podcasting or editing, so it was a learning curve right from the beginning. We began with just an audio-only podcast version uh, for the first 11 episodes. We just began with an audio-only podcast version of the show for the first 11 episodes. We had started a YouTube channel as well, but the picture then was simply our original yellow background uh, TU logo, which early critics of ours uh, terms piss yellow. Episode 12 was when the video form was launched, which at the time the set was just simply my bedroom at home, so humble beginnings. Then episode 75, we introduced graphics to the video episodes. In episode 138, we launched our current wave set in our brand new dedicated studio, which we are still in to this day. And in episode 170, that's when we changed the graphics again to reflect our current black, blue, and white unshackled logo. Waves began my first foray into broadcast media. The format has changed over the years as I've experimented with different episodes and responded to audience feedback, but the aim has always been to provide both comment and analysis of the current news events and to interview like-minded people about how they are playing their part in the battle we find ourselves in against the regressive left. We've had a wide variety of guests from law academics, popular YouTubers, patriot activists, psychology professionals, and policy experts. The popularity of the show has grown on every platform, most noticeably on YouTube, where we now have a dedicated audience in the live chat during each episode premiere. So thank you to all those loyal followers who've joined us over the years, and you value the contribution we have made to the alt media in Australia. Of course, I am not disappearing from the alt media scene, far from it. Starting this Sunday, 15th of September, I am launching a brand new fast-paced live news and information show called Wilmsfront. It will be broadcast Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday nights at around 7 p.m. Melbourne time on my own personal YouTube channel and at rationalrise.tv, plus on your preferred podcasting platform. The news cycle is now constantly changing and evolving almost every hour of every day. Waves most of the time was pre-recorded and either focused on single issues or three or four at most. By the time episodes were edited and released, the news cycle had already changed. We almost front being a live show aimed at being fast paced, it will bring you relevant news happening around the globe right now and offering immediate uh, analysis. Now to reflect on the Waves journey these past three years, I thought for the final show, I would extend an invitation to all four of the co-hosts I've had on Waves during its run. My original co-host, the co-founder of The Unshackled, Suka Fernando, who was with us until September 2017, is currently studying overseas, so failed to get back to me before the recording of this episode. Michael Smythe is currently interstate, so does not have access to audiovisual equipment. He was with us throughout the year of 2018. One former co-host who was eager to come on was Jacob Watts. He was the Unshackled's editor-at-large from 2017 to early 2018 and co-hosted this show during that period. He provided what I would say is a more mainstream conservative political perspective to this show. So it was always interesting discussing the, the news of that time with him every week. So let's do this one last time with Jacob. Jacob, welcome back to the final episode of The Unshackled Waves. Yeah, uh, when you first joined us, it was the middle of uh, 2017, you were, you were still in high school. Obviously, a lot of time has passed uh, since then. Bit of time, Tim, bit of time. It's uh, almost broaching on three years now, so give it another few months. It's nearly on three years, and you know, a lot of what's happened since then. You know, we've seen uh, Brexit, we've seen Trump, uh, we've seen uh, you know, many threats to freedom of speech and freedom of religion and our liberty in general. So what's happened in the last three years? Well, obviously you're at a university now, you're still engaged in, in politics and the news. So 
you've obviously watched these developments uh, as I have, and yes, uh, Trump and Brexit, they they happened, but they're, they're still in a bit of strife. Uh, obviously, uh, Trump has had his challenges and is up for uh, re-election next year, and you know, Brexit, Boris is well, he's throwing everything at it, at trying to get uh, Brexit through, but he's been thwarted every step of the way. It's just been horrid to watch. Well, there's two types of people, and when I was at CPAC, um, I've been doing a, a lot of work. Um, you know, I've had started off with the Unshackle, but I've also got uh, published recently in the Quadrant and in the Spectator, and I got interviewed by the SBS and and some of our work at the Deakin University Liberal Club was front page of the Australian last Friday. So uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but what I found out at CPAC was um, from Nigel Farage that there are some snakes some snakes uh, in the movement, uh, namely Malcolm Turnbull, people that pretend to be conservatives, uh, whereas they're not conservatives. Uh, we're seeing this in Britain with uh, John Burko, the Speaker of the House. He is quite evidently uh, a Remainer. Uh, he's quite evidently an elite, and he's quite evidently not on the side of the people. So we can look at that and we can see that there are many wolves in sheep's clothing and that the fight has a long way to go. Yes, uh, when you were with us, uh, Malcolm Turnbull was uh, still the Prime Minister. I think when we, we used to do this show together, uh, we were going through the Marriage Law Postal Survey, which well, seems such a long time ago, but in the middle of 2018, the well, Liberal Party had decided they'd had enough of Malcolm Turnbull and Scott Morrison seem to be the, I call him the Goldilocks Prime Minister because it seemed that Tony Abbott was too conservative, Malcolm Turnbull too left wing and Scott Morrison, uh, given that he won the, the recent federal election, seems to be just right. Yeah, I would say so, but, um, you know, I, I thought Goldilocks um, was female and, and um, of blonde hair um, and I think that the Prime Minister is about six foot tall. You know, <laughs> you know what I meant, the, not, uh, oh, Goldilocks porridge. Porridge. Yes, porridge. you know how, how the Goldilocks... The Prime Minister was a transsexual, Tim. <laughs> Stop thinking yeah, it as a social justice warrior. <laughs> Sorry, um, you know, with Gavin McInnes as Miles McInnes, um, you know, um, you know, I, I tend to take on the on the mantra of instead of Miles Richard after Richard Di Natale, the mm. uh, the great Queens pioneer. Um, yeah, I know what you're saying, Tim. Um, I think that um, Scott and um, his wife, um, great, the great Australians. Um, he was obviously very strong on border security. Uh, his time as treasurer uh, helped Australia balance the books, balance the budget, bringing us back in black. Uh, the fierce work of Scott Morrison and, and uh, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg, you know, has taken our country um, out of the brink of the dark ages, which were uh, brought to us by the parent best treasurer of all time, according to, I don't know, some European award. But in reality, one of the worst economic managers in history, Wayne Swan, who managed to squander our nation's prosperity after the mining boom, just, just went burning the books, went burning the books. Not even, you know, scratching a few numbers out here and there, adding a bit, you know, subtracting a bit, you know, stealing money for, you know, his lefty looting mates. Just burning the books, completely burning the books and putting our country in a really bad situation. And uh, great credit to uh, Josh Frydenberg and uh, Scott Morrison for uh, bringing us back in black. Um, you know, and then Tony Abbott, obviously, for stopping the boats. Um, and there's many, many great things that have happened over the last five years. And right now, I think under Scott Morrison, uh, you're going to see a great period of stability in our nation. Uh, there's consensus, there's strong and stable leadership. Often conservatives talk about strong and stable leadership, but I can tell you that under Scott Morrison, there is going to be tremendously strong leadership. Our country has got vision, our country has got direction. Uh, there's been a tiny bit of compromise to silence the squealing children in the corner, but ultimately our nation is going forwards. Uh, we've seen uh, 1.4 million jobs created, 75% of those being full-time jobs. Um, and there's many great things occurring at the moment. 
that inland rail between Brisbane and South Australia. You're seeing $100 billion of infrastructure development. Uh, in reality, this government is doing great things. But what's holding us back in Britain, what's holding us back in America, and what's ha holding us back in Australia is the far-left deep state that has got a hold of our institutions. Um, and they're not letting things go forward. So we're seeing John Burko, as we said, stopping things. We're seeing uh, endless court battles in the US, stopping Trump uh, building his wall completely. And we're seeing uh, the bureaucracy in Australia uh, making it hard for things like the great, beautiful Adani coal mine to be built. So uh, there's still many enemies to be fought. Well, you and I, were both uh, Victorians, so it's somewhat uh, dark times here. You mentioned before you seemed a bit gender confused, but that's you can now change your birth certificate every six months to male, female, or whatever with the recent uh, new uh, law changes. And well, there's also yeah, now, yeah. yes. On, on Instagram, I changed my gender to attack helicopter. Um, I really liked the movie growing up, um, Black Hawk Down. Um, so I really just thought that I'd want to embody myself in film. Well, soon, because there's a bill being proposed by Fiona Patton in the Victorian Parliament, a universal hate speech bill. So soon it'll be, if you, if you want to identify as an attack helicopter, have it on your birth certificate, it'll be hate speech uh, not to use those pronouns. Oh, Tim, I'm a very sensitive person. So mm. I'm really glad that Fiona Patton and with all her reason, uh, is out here to protect me. You know, if it wasn't for Fiona Patton's 18C on steroids, you know, I would just be a complete mess. I wouldn't want to know what to do, but I'm so thankful that the government's here to protect me, that Fiona Patton and all her wisdom is, you know, keeping me from, you know, the bounds of despair and and um, she's keeping me, in, keeping me um, happy with this bill not letting anyone criticise me. I'm very thankful for the tremendously hard work of Fiona Patton. Yes. Oh, we shouldn't use the word uh, steroids either. That implies that uh, uh, drug use is bad. Oh, but she's probably like, I, I don't know. Like, you know how the um, Soviet Union, how all the, like, the East German women had so much testosterone injected uh, into them that they ended up um, practically being men? So that's kind of how I think of this bill as some kind of fiery uh, East German female, um, you know, discus or shot put thrower or something, you know, very strong. Oh, well, they do have those types of women in women's sports now, the ones that used to be men. Like the 110 kilo men that, um, that pummel women in, in, in WAFL? Uh, used to be men. Like, they're now used to women. Be men. Yeah. That are now women, but the thing is, like, if you take, um, if you're taking uh, these drugs for a long period of time, and then say, if you take, uh, with the case with the East German uh, athletes back in the day, if you're taking um, testosterone for X amount of years, and then you stop three months before the Olympics or whatever, you're still going to have that effect. It's saying they can they can have 20 years as a male, but then have I don't know, six to 12 months of um, taking these uh, hormone changes or whatever, you're still going to have that 20 years there. You can't do away with that. So I think there's some real dangers here um, with the Deakin University Liberal Club's work. Um, we said, I shared a video, I mean, uh, that there are only two genders from Prager University. Two, two genders. And I said that Labor's bill does not stack up with scientific fact. So I shared the Prageview video along with a video saying that uh, that the conservatives are being censored. And then what happened is a Deakin Uni a student association um, went ahead and threatened the punishment, punishment or whatever against us, right? So the irony of it is I shared a Prageview video against censorship of conservatives. What happens straight away? We get censored. If you want to look, go to the front page of The Australian type in Deakin University Liberal Club Geelong, type in the Australian in Google, you'll see it. So I shared a quote from George Orwell, all records have been falsified, all paintings have been repainted, um, all statues have been renamed, something along like that. Um, I shared that with an Age article from The Age, which is a centre-left newspaper, and, and you've got to remember, George Orwell was a socialist. So 
both shared a, a, an opinion from a socialist and a centre-left newspaper critical of authoritarianism, and that very post got censored. So we are in dark times. And look at Israel for allow, look at many people simply speaking their mind and losing their job. Even me here now talking to you, Tim, I'm putting myself at risk. But because I'm a believer and lover of free speech, um, I'm on here. Now, I might not ab agree with absolutely everything that's on this platform, okay? But I believe in freedom of speech and I believe that everyone uh, should have their voices heard and they should also have their voices rebutted if there's something wrong with their arguments. So that's why I'm happy to come on here, Tim, and I'm very thankful uh, for you inviting me on. But we don't have to agree with absolutely everything anyone says. We're not in the USSR. We're not in no. the DPR. So that's the beauty of it. We should just be able to talk, you know, like two men, having a chat, having a bit of a chin whack. And we shouldn't uh, have this fear that we'll lose our job simply by talking to someone or interviewing someone, even if they were to say, even perhaps um, do uh, certain political activities in Bendigo, um, even if you were to interview someone like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you share their views and all their opinions. And you shouldn't be slandered. You should not be slandered into saying that you share their views and opinions by simply talking to them, because we should all be talking to each other and we should all be sharing opinions. And this is how we move ahead. Freedom of speech, sharing dialogue, sharing opinion, sharing knowledge, and rebutting and refining and taking the hard edge off. So I simply say to those people that want to slander people, that want to besmirch people, for talking to people, for sharing ideas with people, that you are scum. You are scum. People should be able to talk to each other. I heard Ezra Levant say, uh, when I was, I heard Ezra Levant speaking at the Freedom Liberty Conference a few years ago, I also support, spoke with Ezra Levant, and he said he'd want to know if someone was anti-Semitic, and they should be able to say that because then he would not know to invite them to their dinner parties. I'm the biggest supporter of the Jewish people. I love Israel. But what I don't like is the fact that you uh, can get slandered if you talk to someone who's slightly different, whatever. That's the problem. Um, in the days of the Salem witch hunt, in the, in, in the Crucible, which is a play by Arthur Miller, People, you know, there were witch hunts. There were witch hunts that were based on complete delusions, complete delusions, and people would get killed, people would get executed for, for all kinds of things. It was McCarthyism and Russia collusion, mm. delusion of steroids. But this is what's happening at the moment. There is guilt by association, there is witch hunts, and there is nonsensical lunatics running around in circles all the time. People need to take a deep breath and calm the fuck down. And they need to listen to people. Yeah, two rights. The philosophy I've always had is that you speak for you. You should be judged on the views that you express uh, because obviously that is what you believe inside. And talking to somebody, even like politely, like have we forgotten what civility is? Even if you disagree with someone, you're allowed to challenge them, but you know, it, there should still be civility. So that's all the approach that, that I always take. And I say, judge me uh, for, you know, what I've written uh, and the, the views that I've expressed. Uh, don't, don't judge me for, for anything else. But I want to go back to, that brings me the, the CPAC Australia conference, because that was uh, slandered by uh, Senator Christina Keneally as a far-right extremist conference. And she wanted uh, Rahid Kasim uh, banned from entering uh, Australia because of some mean things that he said on Twitter about uh, Nicola Sturgeon, even though that he well, he's, he's clearly not white and he's a, he's a former uh, Muslim. And this was scary because she is the shadow home affairs minister. So she, if she was in Peter Dutton's position now, she would ban any, like all foreign guests from that conference. Sorry, Tim, this brings to the problem um, of the religious uh, freedoms bill that's being talked about now is the fact that it can act, it can has a potential to act as a blasphemy law to protect certain religious minorities that have a rather violent and intolerant inclinations. So if that bill's passed and that, that it has that unintended consequence, 
and then you have a Home Affairs Minister who wants to um, not allow criticism um, of people who would want to criticise that certain minority religion that tends to be have some awfully violent and um, discriminatory views in the extreme elements of it, then you're totally protecting that uh, from conversation. And then if you protect that certain uh, religion that has some very violent inclinations from any discrimination, then you allow uh, regular people in the suburbs, you allow them, you allow their uh, views to fester and to get really dirty and rotted and really disgusting if people can't talk openly with each other. Now, I've got um, many friends um, who um, may may be from that religious viewpoint. And, and how we do it is we talk. We can say, yeah, this is happening, this is happening. And I won't beat around the bush. I'll say how it is. But if you can't have those discussions with people from different religions or different understandings, and if you stop people coming in who espouse views that you don't agree with, it's going to have a really negative effect. Now, at CPAC, the ironic thing is the pictures of there was heaps of people wearing Make America Great Again hats. Now, the people wearing those hats, they were Japanese, and they were coming here because there's a JPAC conference or CJPAC going on in Japan recently. So they were actually Japanese. Now, um, a lot of the people, now there, there were Indians, the people, there were students there that were Indian, that were Bangladeshi, um, there was a head of the Australian Jewish Association there. Uh, there was a, two very prominent Indigenous Australian politicians there, fabulous people, Jacinta Price, absolutely terrific woman, great Australian. And the same with Warren Mundine. These are just geniuses, so intelligent, so bright. Um, and they're, in my opinion, they should both have ministries. They should both be very high in Parliament, not because of their skin colour, but just because of their merit. They are fantastic people. They are so intelligent. Um, in reality, it was much more diverse than a Marxist conference. Uh, you, you, I think we've seen Marxist conference are all full of, uh, you know, rather chubby people of uh, rather pastel coloured skin. Um, and this was a really, it was actually quite diverse, a diverse conference. And it was great to see Craig Kelly. Uh, I was uh, working, working there, I guess, with uh, Andrew Cooper, working for Andrew Cooper and. Uh, and the Liberty Works team that was uh, putting that together. And and uh, we saw Craig Kelly. Craig Kelly was here. Craig Kelly uh, gave Chris, Christina Keneally a cup. So it's the Christina Keneally cup. And you can spell cup with either a C or a K, depending. Well, her uh, name is actually Christina Kershaw Keneally, so... Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. That's just uh, just a spare of the moment thing. Mm. But the Christina K, Keneally K, and Cup. You can spell it with a C or a K, just depending how you feel. And anyone could attend CPAC, even if you're a socialist, you could attend CPAC. Where uh, recently, anyone, anyone, though, I saw the the Carnage House production uh, boys. They went to just document the the socialism conference in Sydney, and they were uh, escorted out for being suspected uh, right wingers. Yeah, that's the thing. Like Christina Keneally could have came. We don't really care. Uh, it was just Antifa that were outside. They were smashing on the glass, and there was like 30 or 40 of them, and they were smashing on the glass, and they were calling the cops fascists, and I think they might have even been calling Tony Abbott a Nazi. And and the, the ironic thing was, it, and they were calling all, all us racist, but that was happening when Jacinta Price and um, Warren <laughs> Mundine were talking, and they were receiving a standing ovation. Um, and, you know, we we're, were clapping like two of the greatest Indigenous, um, you know, politicians to ever... Uh, walk out, walk the face of Australia, and and they were calling us racist. And I think that people don't even think racially there in a in a conservative conference. Like uh, there was also people from the Epoch Times, um, so they're an anti-communist uh, newspaper. So it was actually a large um, proportion of Chinese people there, um, you know. But first year, but they're going to probably bring in more. There were Indians, uh, people from Indian descent there. There were some older people. There were some younger people. There were Indigenous, non-Indigenous. There was uh, Christians there, uh, atheists, uh, Falun Gong practitioners, Buddhists. Um, there were, you know, uh, Hindus. 
uh, everything you could think of. There was such a diverse group of people there. Um, and, but the thing is, they all believed in, in meritocracy and equality uh, under the law. And, um, you know, that's what brought us all together, a love for Western civilization, you know, a love for the values of freedom. Uh, and that brought us all together. And CPAC was a fantastic event. Uh, it's going to be even be bigger and better next year. I was an honour to meet people like Nigel Farage and, you know, have a glass, uh, have a chat with uh, Tony Abbott. Um, some really, really great people there. And um, just from meeting you at the Friedman Conference, uh, wrapping up here, Tim, meeting you at the Friedman Conference about nearly three years ago now, and then to you know, writing for The Quadrant, writing for The Spectator, meeting uh, Tony Abbott, Nigel Farage, and really being part you know, of a history-making event. Uh, seeing the first uh, Christina Keneally Cup uh, being handed out, great, great thing. And, uh, you know, uh, just tremendous. Now, uh, we've got a lot of work to do, and I wish you uh, the best of luck on your new show, your new platform, uh, and I hope it's a tremendous success. It's been a great and fantastic journey here with the Unshackled Waves. I, I remember when I joined the Unshackled team, I think it had no more than uh, a little bit more than a, a thousand or fifteen hundred likes on Facebook. Growing so much uh, since then. I can't remember what it was at at that particular time, but yeah, it was probably down down that uh, end of the the spectrum. So yeah, it's it's been an incredible journey for me. Just all the, the the way through and i was glad that that you're part of it and you're still very young uh there's there's so much more that uh you can achieve in well politics writing other media the the sky's the limit yeah but i i started off on on a platform now that as i was saying before with free speech there are many different opinions that are here on the unshackled some uh, that i entirely agree with and others that I would entirely disagree with. And then some that stick around there in the middle. So we should not uh, rush to stereotype people, dare I say, stereotype people or organisations. We should listen to what people have got to say um, and we should have discernment. Now, um, the left needs to learn how to listen and so does the radical right. So we've got to respect and we've got to listen to each other. Goes back to civility. Um, now, I wish um, Tim all the best. Now, Tim has some views that I disagree with. I don't, and, and I'm sure I have some views that Tim disagree with, especially over that ma marriage plebiscite. Tim and I had many differences. Now, um, I was in favour of traditional marriage, and I think Tim didn't really care um, for the government really being involved too much in the process of marriage. So. Um, you know, we've all got different and beautiful opinions, but we've got to listen to each other. And for those who call the Unshackled a far-right news organisation or call you neo-Nazi, I think, Tim, you've got, um, I think you were a member of a libertarian party and your personal life not, might not be, um, ha ha it might be just uh, something that you'd probably want to keep private and something that might not be um so it might be a little bit you might want to have a bit of fun or drink or whatever or meet new people or you you're not an ultra conservative prude who hates people um you just go about your thing and and um you know live your own life and people should do the same and they shouldn't make assumptions on people and they should understand that there are more to people than reaches the service or that they think they're on the service and they need to look more deeply because um, this whole judgment, judging your whole website, slandering your whole website, they don't, it's not my role to talk about you, but they don't know who you are. They don't really know your story. Well, and they think they do. They think they do, but you are probably the furthest thing, Tim, from a stereotypical conservative or libertarian. Um, and they think they know who you are. They don't know who you are. There's many people, they're all different skin colors, all different, uh, you know, whatever's. And um, you don't know someone. So I don't think you know someone. And, and certainly this slander against the unshackled needs to come to a stop. Certainly you do some things that are a bit showy, that are designed to get some attention. We're in the online age. That's what's uh, expected. But Tim, let me ask you this question. Are you a neo-Nazi? 
<laughs> no. Um, well, given what you've just said, I don't think I'd last very long in a neo-Nazi society. Okay. Tim, are you a fascist? Fascist? No. I believe in free speech, uh, free markets, uh, civil liberties. Civil liberties, that's a very fascist concept. Tim, are you, um, I don't know, are you, are you, so what are you then? Are you just a middle of the road kind of uh, conservative or what would you be, Tim? I still consider myself a libertarian, even though the, the Council of uh, Libertarian Overlords would like to uh, revoke and uh, tear up my libertarian card, but I've always believed in free speech, open inquiry, uh, community yeah, cohesion. Um, Tim does, you know, lead a lifestyle that might not be accepted by Nazis. Uh, and Tim is a good bloke. He's a hard-working bloke, and he's built the unshackled up from the roots. You know, he's obviously the tech, right? So we started this, or Tim started this. I was editor at large for a while, but the tech. So look at this screen that Tim's got behind him, this microphone. Uh, it started off it's such a small project, and now Tim's built it into a little small empire. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it the largest and fastest growing uh, alternative uh, bright wing news website in Australia? Yep, we're one of the few uh, purely independent alt-media websites where we're going strong si since the, the doubters at the beginning uh, started yeah, just at my house and yeah, look where we are now. Yeah, so there's plenty of room to grow now. I, I hope Tim edits this heavily because I've said some things that are a bit stupid and uh, hopefully Tim makes me sound a bit smarter. But uh, you know, we, we're looking at this and we're looking at what you can do. Now, JFK said, you know, don't ask what your country can do for you. You know, ask what you can do for your country. So you need to ask, what can I contribute? What can I do? And you need to realize that one grain of sand can be you, but there's millions in the, in the, in the beach. There's millions in the beach. There's millions of little bricks you know, that make up a big wall. And that to build the wall or to walk the journey of a thousand miles, you need to take that first step or lay that first brick. Um, all that, all that, for that beach, that wave has to crush against that stone and, and decay and, and to, you know, turn it into sand. Something has to occur, something has to happen. So I encourage, if you believe in something strong enough, stand up for it and act, otherwise, it'll be taken away from you. As Reagan says, freedom does not live um, in the bloodstream. It can become extinct in one generation. And it is our job to preserve and to protect individual liberty and individual um, freedom. Because if we don't have that, we don't have much at all. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, free speech and freedom in general, it's the, the biggest battle in the current year. So. Thank you again, Jacob, for joining me one last time. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Tune into Tim's new show as well. Another co-host of the show who's been with us since the beginning and is still with us is senior editor of The Unshackled, Damien Ferry. He's been an occasional host throughout the show's run, with others having not been available. I've been able to rely on him. He has an opinion on everything, so it doesn't matter what the news of the week is, he has always been able to express an informed view. He'll still be part of The Unshackled going forward, but as one of the originals from The Unshackled at the beginning, he's the perfect person to say a final farewell to Waves. Damien, welcome to the last Unshackled Waves episode. Thanks for having me, Tim. Now, you're a co-host who's uh, still a member of the, the Unshackled team. You've been the, the senior editor well, since you joined us uh, way back in 2016, in our first uh, year of existence, actually, uh, before this uh, podcast uh, launched. And uh, obviously, that was uh, pre-Trump, before he got elected. And I, I recall your, your first... Uh, article, or should I say, a two-part essay series on The Unshackled, which was about uh, uh, the, the US election, and you did one before and after Trump won. Yeah, that was a really good milestone, um, just to really see how many episodes we've been able to do over the years. 2016, it's been going for, as I, I can recall, a pretty much three-year anniversary, just about. Um, I think we started 
roughly around the August uh, 2016 mark, something along there. I think from memory, I joined about a month after you um, actually created um, the Unshackled, so pretty pretty early on. And um, at one stage, we had four main guys uh, in the, the Unshackled that was um, really involved. And then slowly, slowly, we ended up getting more contributors. And um, the, then uh, the two that were initially involved for, for personal reasons um, chose to leave, but then we've still been in it and, and been able to uh, continue with our work. Um, on the, the Trump one, that, that was really one, one of my favorite uh, uh, articles that I've been able to do. I remember that the, the two-part um, essay, there were about 3,000 uh, words each. It was really in depth, um, just not only on the actual issues that brought the election on and the characters involved, but also a, an analysis on all of the actual states and how each state could move either to the Republican or the Democrat field um, for that election and a bit of a prediction as to how it was going. And I was only, I think, in the end, maybe a couple states off, um, but roughly was on the ball when it came to the result of the, of the election of Trump. And I remember they were two of the most uh, widely uh, viewed articles in the early days. And because we were just starting out, the, the Unshackled was an unknown brand. Uh, this was back in the day we promoted our work through Facebook uh, before the, the algorithm started to shadow ban people. It was sort of, well, <laughs> fa fa Facebook had a bit of free speech back then. It seems like such a distant memory now, but uh, yeah, we, were, we had to be pretty aggressive in those days. We, I remember we used to spam our articles to, to 50 different groups to, to get a bit of traction in the early days, but we've come a long mm. way since then. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember that. Uh, there, there was one stage where I, I actually was able to uh, determine uh, how many groups we were able to share to and within what time limit. Um, <laughs> otherwise, he did that this is something that I mean unfortunately these rules aren't actually told I mean you can't actually look it up on Google and, and type in how many uh, articles can I share and, and whatnot it doesn't give an answer and Facebook unfortunately doesn't actually provide you with this information which I think they should that way uh, people can avoid a ban but what I've actually been able to determine was that um, I would normally share um, to 20 different groups uh, in the space of 24 hours. So every 24 hours I'd do 20 more groups and that would normally be safe. Uh, when it was that I ended up um, going towards the 30 mark, that's when I ended up getting a, uh, a pop. So I determined basically the, the safest amount and an amount that you can do a lot of uh, sharing to was around the 20. Um, unfortunately, with one of my profiles, actually it got to a stage where they um, stopped me from sharing to groups. And then I was unable to do that then. So I wasn't able to share uh, any more um, through the profile that I currently use as my public profile. And I think the reason for that is because there was a couple of times where I may have um, shared too much within the 24 hour period. So they've slapped that sort of ban on me. They didn't actually take my page down, but they were able to successfully limit my reach. So instead of being able to, um, share to many groups and have many thousands of people see it because every time I wrote an article I would get normally about 10,000 or so uh, people viewing that article and because they limited my reach it got to a stage where it really dropped to only hundreds rather than thousands so they did a really um, good hit job on me there but unfortunately those are the kind of things that we have to face in our alt media um, and we just have to do our best in trying to get out there um, our amount of um, um, shares, our views and people that are on board. Uh, we do have a bigger reach, a uh, big following now that we've got uh, 22,000 um, or, or so people that are following the Unshackled page. So at least there we are getting more people seeing our stuff on a regular basis. Yeah, and I only, I'll still use the word spam to a few groups now, basically just to my page, the Unshackled Supporters Group, and a few other uh, friendly Facebook groups where I'm well-known and people 
people like our work but yeah nothing like the early days which i i love about it now all, the, all, all that spamming and yes there was four of us originals there was sukath obviously who was my co-founder and then there was uh luke uh, both of them were based in sydney you're in wollongong mm. i was in melbourne so we sort of had a bit of a uh, Sydney-centric uh, team to uh, begin with. And I remember in uh, December uh, 2016, I actually uh, travelled to Sydney to, to meet up with you guys uh, one week yeah. and we sort of had an initial sort of uh, team bonding experience. So, so, so that was uh, quite fun and, yeah, it, it, it helped us sort of, yeah, just uh, get to know each other so, yeah, we could, you know, work, work more cohesively and, yeah, obviously... It's easy to sort of, with the internet these days, work with people on the other side of the world, but it's obviously still good. And currently at the moment, um, Steele is in the, the Melbourne studio now. He was based in Canberra for a lot of the time, but there definitely is like having people that you work with in person. Uh, mm. uh, uh, that's certainly still the, uh, provides the best environment. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I remember that day, you know, it comes to mind and it was a, it was a great day to meet up. Um, and I've also met up with Steele a few times as well when I've gone down to Canberra and hung out with Steele. And um, that was when he was um, living there at one stage. And, you know, he's a great guy. And I, I really, I think it's been a great experience just to meet like-minded people that have been able to um, continue to um, have those sort of um, same uh, like like-minded views and being able to sort of be on message to provide this sort of um, I guess you can say a goal to, to provide the public with uh, a different point of view that they normally get with the mainstream media and I think that's very important because when you're doing your job like this and and you notice that you continue um, having uh, the elite try and shut you down or slowly try and um, limit your reach, then you know that you're doing something right. And I think that's very important in this day and age, that especially with governments and so forth, trying to limit freedoms and, and trying to make it more difficult for us to get our message across. And there were a lot of alt media startups at the same time, the Unshackled launch they were sort of we we worked together with them some of the time but there were always these rivalries which would uh rear uh, every now and then uh but uh the unshackled uh, we came out on top at the end and i, I remember back when we were quite small our, our sort of nemesis was the the, the people in a facebook group uh, the australian youth uh, political space so they tried to create a, a rival publication uh, public quality media. Uh, I'm not in those groups anymore, but yeah, that's, <laughs> they're, they're the sort of people who thought they could take us on and like drag us down. Yeah. I mean, these, these people I'm sure are behind a lot of the uni rag mags as well. So <laughs> yeah, this, this is, um, it's quite common. I, I, I'm still a member of those groups, but aren't really involved as I used to be because it gets to a stage where you just get sick of debating, you know, people, um, that, that are just totally on the opposite um, scale to you. I mean, these people, there, there's no way that they were able to have a have a proper debate with them. It, it just becomes, um, you know, a, a hitting hitting your head against a brick wall at some time. So, um, and just waste your energy it makes you it makes you feel depressed at times and, and um, it's just a time waster. So, I, I, I think. Um, I mean, it's 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 obvious that because there's only really us and X Y Z that are, are the main two um, guys in this, um, it really says that even even though there's many people out there that support us, a lot of people are really um, hesitant to go out there and and do something like we have um, due to you know being just the thought of being persecuted out there, which is quite common. A lot of people um, I know, they get doxxed and they lose their jobs. Um, you know, they're scared, you know, because they get threats against their family members. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of these things, um, and this is a risk that all of us have in um, getting involved in this. And obviously it's just so important, um, so, you know, because we're so principled and because it's such an important thing for us to do that we want to get it out there, that we make a lot of sacrifices in that. Um, 
I mean, I, I wish I was able to um, contribute more than I do. Um, it's just unfortunate, well, not unfortunately, actually fortunately that, that I've just got um, a, a, a bigger heap of um, things to deal with now because of family. Um, now, now I've got three kids, whereas when I started uh, in 2016, I only had um, just the one um, new one, so it's, it's a lot of a lot of things have happened in those years to all of us, um, whether it be work uh, commitments and whether it be, um, of course, family commitments as well with children and and whatnot. And for us to be able to um, still, whenever we can, try and set aside some allocated time to be able to write articles or go to events, travel up, you know, a couple of hours to an event um, in Melbourne or Sydney or, or whatnot and record and then, you know, put videos together. I mean, that's all time there. And we're not getting paid big bucks to do this at all. Like, this is just for the love of it that we're doing this because it's really important that we see society turn and, and obviously eventuate into, into a better one for, for future generations to come. Yeah, you uh, work full time and yeah, now you've got three children, but you've been with us, uh, like I said, since the beginning and you've always been reliable because uh, as I mentioned, I've had multiple co-hosts throughout the, the, the run, but there, there's always been you I can, I can count on to sort of, if I, if I need somebody at the last minute, you'll just hop on the, the phone after the kids have gone to sleep and yeah, just have a, have, have a, have a rant with me about the, the stories of the week, which was sort of the the half of the show. We sort of started it off with a news review show and mm. an interview show. We've sort of experimented over the time with, with the sort of different show formats that we have, uh, like getting an expert on or just focusing on one uh, topic. So it's, it, it's been a great launching pad uh, wave to sort of see what works, what our, our audience uh, will be engaged in and what sort of format they like so it's and obviously the the quality and the production values have improved significantly over the uh, the three years that we've been on air yeah yeah i think it's gotten better i think it's something i mean even doing the election coverage i think that it was huge i mean that that was something that definitely i mean just seeing people instead of watching the abc watching the unshackled live doing election coverage and being able to put the graphics on on the screen where people can see uh, how each seat was coming with their percentages. I mean, that was just great. That was really, um, when, when you have the right presenters and the right people um, having discussions on such an election night, and then you have also the, the, the footage, the graphics and everything involved as well, that together was just um, such such a milestone there because nobody else had done something like that before. Um, that was a first for alt media in this country anyway. I mean, it was definitely a first. And um, that's something that I think w was a great thing. I mean, when I look at all the different topics we've discussed, um, all of the, uh, when we're doing our weekly review shows, we're doing about three or four main topics. And then of course, when there was particular um, important events such as Christchurch or the Pell case that were like more singular sort of issue um, topics. But um, out of all the sort of um, times or, or the, the things that we've spoken about or that you may have spoken about with others, um, is there any during the Waves podcast um, highlights that you maybe, um, you know, remember or, or look back on as, as something that you enjoy doing? Obviously, when you start to get the, the big names, then it, get, it gets quite exciting. Uh, I remember uh, when I first started watching uh, YouTube, one of my favourites was, was Hunter Avalon. And I think this was around the end of 2017 or, or 18. I was, uh, I was uh, inspired to say aim higher with the, with, with, with the guests that, that I could get on the program. So I emailed Hunter Avalon and he said yes. And... Yeah, he came on and like this is a guy with oh, half a million subs and yeah, I, I was able to interview him. He was a uh, laid back uh, guy, like he was 21. He like it all hadn't gone to his head, and so <laughs> I was a bit of a creepy <laughs> fanboy during that uh, interview. But yeah, it, it, it was great to sort of like chat to somebody like who who had been so successful in in the alt media and and 
j uh, mm. just sort of wow i started watching you uh now i'm interviewing you yeah yeah i, I think it's great when we were able to get um you know elected politicians people um you know with such a good uh high name that, that are very recognizable that everybody knows onto the actual show i mean that that was that was a, a really big thing i mean for alt media at that time even when we're going back a couple of years now um, this was still when we were starting out yet we were still having well-known people um getting involved which i think was really great in boosting uh, the unshackled at the time and um i actually if i was to look back and this was just basically um a bit of a, a quick think but um i think one of the big stories i think that we discussed and one that i remember that that i was actually um that i enjoyed discussing was was the um the the low down on um the whole young nat uh takeover and um and the alt-right sort of um, infiltration, so to speak, in the in the mainstream parties, and what you know the responses were, and all the little bits and pieces of the you know the RN reports, and and all of the. I mean, I think if I was to look back on something, that would be a highlight. And I still actually that was still my favourite podcast when we discussed um, the whole um, young nationals kind of um, issue. I think that was something that was gold and, and came out really well when we did that one because it was able to get a different point of view across that was just way out there and that, that nobody else was discussing. And I mean, even being able to criticize some people on our side for not taking things in the right manner or doing things exactly how we think it should have been done. I think that was very important there because we were able to look at it without any bias. And we said, okay, the, the people, um, in the mainstream media, obviously beating this for all that for all that it's worth, but at the same time, there could have been ways about it that they could have done things differently to be able to still have a a, a good impact, but be able to be more strategic and so forth. Um, and as we've seen, it didn't work out too well for them. But I, I think I think um, you know about the street street movement and um, talking about all these sort of things. I think it, it was always popular with our audience. It was always interesting to talk about and discuss um, because obviously the 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 mainstream are all linking us all in this big bubble and and saying okay these people here are you know the the anti globalist or you know the the people that are you know pushing something that we disagree with. So we're just going to tarnish them and put them in one bracket and say, these are, you know, I guess basically, you know, terrorists, I guess, you know, I mean, even though they probably wouldn't ha haven't mentioned that, well, far right extremists actually is probably the term that they use quite often, um, whatever that means. But um, yeah, you know, like, I, I think I think that was a very important thing. And another thing to note actually is how we've uh, changed over the years, because I remember back in 2016, and this was only when Trump before he was he was victorious in the election things were were heating up but we were still fairly i guess you could say um you know libertarian and and also conservative but then as years went on we became more edgier um and now we feel like we can maybe say a few things that we couldn't say back in 2016 you know the whole the whole um movement and and things have changed in such a way that i feel that whether it be um through our media platform or even just on our social media accounts that within the last couple of years there's been a, a massive change on what we are saying now and things that a couple of years ago we, we we couldn't have thought that we could have said you know we there's no way we would have mentioned it and i think that's a good thing i think it's great that people are able to take more risks and be able to be a little bit more open in their thoughts without thinking oh yeah that might not go down well we better not say this we better not say that and censor ourselves so i, I think that's one thing that i can see from the election of trump brexit the nationalism in in, in europe the the movements here as well in australia building up over the last few years that there has been a lot of change in um how people have um gone further and further into um feeling more confident in being able and even though facebook and social media is trying to close us and shut us down at least we're not um as scared or, or frightened as we may have used to have been so we're a little bit more confident now in, in speaking our mind well i think everyone has learned over the past three years that uh, your optics uh, doesn't count for anything mm. because 
uh, going back to uh, talking about the the news stories that we we uh, tried to uh, decompress, we a lot of our time was uh, consumed by debunking the the fake news of the mainstream media because that's what mm. I've noticed. The mainstream media has gone further and further to the left, uh, just blatantly lying and manipulating news to to put a certain spin on everything and uh, that includes the, the the news corp allegedly far right uh news outlets or i call it news cucks now because <laughs> it's very uh, sanitized i mean you know sky news uh, the australian yeah. there's there's a lot of things that they won't talk about and they sort of just still do the standard neoconservative uh, line. Mm. So it's important for outlets uh, such as us to sort of step up and because there's, especially with the internet these days, a lot of people are finding out the truth for themselves and they're, they're looking for, for somewhere where uh, they know that they're, they're not just going to be fed the, the corporate approved line and, and going to be treated like idiots who are just going to uh, believe, you know, what the, the TV anchor says. Yeah, that's 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 a good thing that you've mentioned there, and I think that's exactly why um, we've been able to, um, like, or, or we definitely in our own mind are saying we we need to push things further. We need to go as far as we can with this and, and be able to push because we know that um, there is a platform out there to do so because many people out there are craving that. They're craving um, our our viewpoint, and they did used to get that viewpoint at times back in other tabloids, but no longer. Um, like you mentioned with Sky News, there was a time where um, people were saying, oh, wow, Sky is that outlet that, you know, it's like, for instance, um, the Fox News of Australia, and, you know, it's getting really, you know, hard-lined, and it's just like us and all sorts of things, and that slowly went downhill when they started censoring people over the Blair Cottrell issue and also... Um, the other people, um, like Mark Latham and so forth, that was yeah, getting sent Ross to, Cameron, uh, uh, so Ross only Cameron. one remaining yeah. uh, co-host of the the Outsiders remains, Rowan Dean. Now that was meant yeah. to be a Sky News' edgy program with the three yeah. most politically incorrect people in Australia, but only mm. one survived. The rest got uh, sacked for hate speech. <laughs> that, that's right, and, and another thing to note is that that sort of argument is also happening currently in 2GB even, and 2GB was also that um, avenue you could say that a lot of people were listening to these shock jocks and saying these guys are hardline, they're you know, not politically correct, they're really out there saying what we think and all that sort of thing, and um, now they've started to, you know, um, basically slowly go down the more PC approach. There's been some people that used to be um, involved in 2GB that have uh, basically left um, or had issues with the um, with the person um, in charge because they are obviously got ties with um, Fairfax. And also, um, not only that, but um, also with the Alan Jones saga as well, where, you know, he's been um, basically threatened um, that they might pull his show down because of a couple of comments that he said about um, Ardern. So, I mean, they're really... But this kind of thing that's happening within 2GB, Sky News, News Corp, um, this is only going to push more people towards us because they're not going to be satisfying um, what, 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 what they want them to. Like, they, they, they used to be able to cater to them and now people are slowly, slowly starting to see that they're just like everybody else. It's two sides of the same coin, you know. Even the the right wing newspapers or or, or whatever, they're still um, censored. They're still very politically correct, and they only say so much. And I think people have really changed in a way that they're starting to demand the truth now. They're starting to demand um, real people that are out there, and they don't care of consequences. I mean, these people are in. Um, you know, high paid positions, whether they're in radio or, or in the newspapers and so forth. And they know that if they do things that are edgy, that they could lose their job and their livelihood. Us, it's not going to affect us because we're not getting paid um, big bucks like they are. So we have nothing to lose, you know what I mean? And that's why it's great that people come to us because they can rely on us in that way. Because at the end of the day, we want to do it because we're passionate about it. Um, we're not doing it for money. 
like a lot of these other people might be doing it as a motivation. So I think that's um, something that people will see. They'll see the genuineness in alt media and that's why it's only been building and there will be a time perhaps in the future um, if we do get so uh, popular that um, we will get shut down off social media. But hopefully people will then start to go to our actual web pages um, and not have to rely on the social media sort of um, uh, presence. And then that way they can just go, okay, I want to look at um, the latest episodes on the Unshackled or XYZ or so forth. They go to our actual websites where we can't get things pulled down. And I think that's something that people have to take note because you can't solely rely on social media because we just don't know what's going to happen in future there. Yeah, post the, the Christchurch uh, mosque uh, massacre, uh, there was a lot of uh, fear that uh, we were going to get kicked off uh, mainstream uh, social media, but uh, we're, we've uh, survived uh, uh, to this date, uh, though we have prepared for what we call doomsday, and like we've got accounts on gab.com, on Telegram, where we've set up so that if Facebook or Twitter or anyone else pulls the plug, uh, people are still able to find us, we're still able to communicate with our, our followers and well they, they originally tried in 2018 with, with Alex Jones because uh, mm. they, they got concerned because too much of what Alex Jones was saying was turning out to be true and so there was the coordinated Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Apple uh, uh, deplatforming him completely in 24 hours yet Infowars is is still around. Uh, Alex Jones, he he's still able to produce his his show uh, five days a week. He still gets to go on vacation, still selling yeah. things through his Infowars store. So Alex Jones is showing, you know, the the mainstream big tech they can they can deplatform you, but in the the internet age, uh, you can you can still find other outlets uh, where you can make your voice heard. Yeah, that's right. And we also um, have seen that in uh, people that were trying to come to Australia to do talks. Um, I remember uh, with David Icke, he got um, shafted even though he's been here multiple times. And he's even a person that um, would be seen as more on the left, although he's a truther. So, I mean, that was still too, um, um, too much of a concern to have someone like him, which isn't a far-right extremist, come here. Um, but, you know, you, you also had it with CPAC, Recently, the, you know, you had Keneally that was trying to um, um, prevent some uh, speakers from coming here, even though the speakers were hardly extreme at all. I mean, uh, a lot of people on our side would even have called them cucks, but I mean, this is how bad things are when you, when, when somebody that we think is a cuck and then a mainstream politician is calling them far right extremists, then you know that there's something definitely wrong there. Um, but one, one thing that I have to say is, um, and I think people are starting to get sick of it. And I think that it's something that needs to be worth mentioning is um, there's a lot of uh, bloggers out there, people that are, are still doing the, the right wing uh, political sort of um, chats, whether it be interviews and um, thing, you know, just normal news worthy stuff. And they're still pushing the, the neocon kind of, you know, conservative kind of lines. And I think they have to wake up to themselves. I mean, we're, this is 2019 here. It's no longer 2015 where we had to sort of push that kind of rhetoric around. Um, these people here, they, they have to get more on the edgy side and have to start speaking to their audiences. And there's still, I mean, there's nothing different to them than there is to say News Corp or Sky News. So what's the point in these people even doing these, um, these blogs? Uh, and this is something that I've seen quite often that they're still um, a lot of people, and I think they're just doing it for fame and fortune because they think that um, hanging around with, you know, people um, they used to be from the Australian Conservatives and, you know, like all those sort of, you know, heavyweights and, you know, the, the mainstream kind of conservative, you know, the Liberal Party, a lot of people are still involved in the Liberal Party and connected to them and that that's um, some, somewhat going to um, help them and, and, and push their kind of name out there. But at the end of the day, what benefit are you actually getting from that? I mean, it's not about fame and fortune. It's about doing what is right and, and speaking um, things that are different to the mainstream, going that extra mile. And there's still people stuck in that, in that spot. I mean, and I, I, I thought that we had evolved from them, but it seems to me that a lot of people still haven't. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, what's the point in being in the, the alt media if you're still going to yeah. censor yourself or scared uh, uh, what some other people uh, might call you? I mean, Antifa's still going to go after yeah. you, but, uh, you know, we, we've never been afraid here at the Unshackled, and, and you and me, three years uh, still standing. Now, obviously, even though Waves is, is ending, uh, I'll still have you on my uh, new program, uh, Wilms Front, from time to time, because uh, uh, the audience uh, here at the Unshackled, I'm sure they'll still be interested in, in what you have to say on what will happen in the future, and it could be anything. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know what the future holds. Um, I mean, as society goes on, it's not looking good, but hopefully with the with the little um, movements we have here and there that we are building something um, great and, and hopefully more people get on board and start to be sick of the usual and, and try to find some truth within themselves and say, okay, well, really see, start to see what these politicians are saying and see through their lies and see what what really needs to occur for society society to just become a better place um, rather than just to hear both Liberal and Labor talking points. We see, we're hearing the same usual thing and we've been hearing this for, for decades now and, you know, it's time that we move on from that and we really get somewhere here. Look at the past mistakes and try and uh, fix those mistakes, not be a conservative in, in a way that uh, when you lose a battle, you just go on to the next defensive thing that you have to try and protect before you lose that one as well because they've failed at that for 50 years now it's just getting to a stage and i mean i'm seeing a lot of people that call themselves conservatives and they're sort of you know you see them on social media saying oh look you know um i i disagree with you know um gay marriage but like you know um it's okay if you know they're together in a civil ceremony and then the next year you'll say oh i Gay marriage is okay, but, you know, I, I, I think it's too much if we get to polygamy marriage and then the next year will be, oh, polygamy, polygamy marriage is all right, but I don't want bestiality, you know, and this is how they're always losing because they're always trying to defend the next thing that continues to come along. And rather than trying to push back and change things that in, in order to how they used to be, uh, the progressives are continuing to go on the attack and... They're, they're just continuing to, you know, puck out and sell themselves out. And without mentioning names, I mean, you see it all the time and, and you think to yourself, oh, it's just so cringe seeing a lot of these things that people put up that um, they call themselves conservative and they, they seem hardly conservative at all. Well, take care, Damien, and thank you for your contribution to this program. No, no, it's been a great, it's been a great experience um, of three years and uh, definitely will contribute more in future and love to be on more podcasts. And yeah, just uh, thank you to all of the audiences that have supported it and will continue to support us in the future. And that brings us to the end of the Unshackled Waves. One journey on the Unshackled has ended, but a new one is about to begin. In anticipation for the first show, here is the official Wellness Front promo. To know the challenges facing the modern world, you can no longer just believe the corporate mainstream media. But the beauty of our time is that you can seek out the truth about what is really happening out in our streets, our institutions, governments and culture. You can know what your fellow man is actually thinking and see the conversations taking place between ordinary folk anywhere in the world. That's the media cut through I'll deliver on Wilms Front. Broadcast from the Unshackled Studios to video and podcast platforms across the internet, Join me live every Sunday, Wednesday and Friday nights, 7pm Melbourne time for a news and information summary that won't take you for a fall. I will be promoting Wilms Front shows and content on my own personal social media channels as well as the Unshackled. I'm on facebook.com slash wilmsfront and on twitter at wilmsfront and on minds.com slash timwilms and gab.com slash timwilms. Wilmsfront joins our other recently launched Unshackled Productions. There is of course Detonation hosted by my Unshackled colleague Steel Archer which as well as being on the Unshackled main YouTube channel now has its own dedicated YouTube channel. There is of course the highly successful Uncuckables program, our joint production with the XYZ and the Rational Rise live every Thursday night 8.30pm 
Melbourne Time on its dedicated YouTube channel and which now has its own website at theuncuckables.com. On Tuesday evening, Trans Tasman Talk was launched, another joint production between The Unshackled and our New Zealand counterpart, RightMinds.nz. It is hosted by myself and Right Minds editor, Due De Boer. The aim of the show is to inform our respective audiences about the similar and different battles we are facing as Anglosphere nations of the South Pacific is broadcast live both on The Unshackled's and the Right Minds YouTube channels every Tuesday, Tuesday evening, evening at 7 p.m. Melbourne time, which is 9 p.m. Auckland time. All of our production, as well as being on YouTube, will be available on rationalrise.tv, which is the self-hosted video website created by James Fox Higgins of The Rational Rise. He intends to make it the new home of alt media content in Australia, where it cannot be censored or hidden. It will host Rational Rise, XYZ, and Unshackled, and other exclusive content, so make sure you check it out and take out a subscription. We've built up a loyal following over the past three years, as I've mentioned, but for us to keep growing, you need to support us financially. The Unshackled has multiple methods to allow you to do this. We are on patreon.com slash the unshackled, paypal.me slash the unshackled. There's also our premium membership option on our website, theunshackled.net slash membership, and our web donation form at theunshackled.net slash donate. We are also on subscribestar.com slash the unshackled, and of course our online store, theunshackled.net slash store, featuring our most popular merchandise. So, for the last time, thanks for your company throughout the show's run, and join me for the next chapter in The Unshackled. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.